Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is Wednesday, the 6th of December, 2023, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. And it's Wednesday, Wednesday, Israel Wednesday. This is so amazing because Karen's on here every week and she brings different guests. And what a joy and a delight for us to just get a sense and a and a taste and just to experience Israel with you every week, um, Karen. So we just want to bless you and want to thank you for this. Um, Hannah, would you please open in prayer for us and pray over Karen and the Silvers? Abba, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for tech. We're so grateful for the internet. Father, we're so grateful that you have an infrastructure and we want to cover it with the blood of the perfect Pesach lamb and ask you to hold it, Lord. This is what's building our, our family, our community, Lord, and our love for one another and our ability to hold one another's arms up at this time. Father, we're grateful for Josie and David. We know, God, that this is a an amazing to you a couple raised up under an Esther anointing for such a time moved across the world into Israel just for this season Lord for this time and father we thank you for Karen always for her worship that takes us into the heavenlies that brings us to that place of ascension Lord where the prophetic begins to flow like a river over every one of us Father, we invite your Ruha Kakodesh to come with us today. Would you meet with us? Would you guide us? Would you open every heart? Would you stir up our spirits? Father, we, we choose to press in now as never before. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Hannah. Over to you, Karen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah, for that beautiful prayer. Oh my gosh, I mean, we are in the day of battle, <laughs> so literally, um, and um, I'm, I'm just so blessed that Josie and David will be on to, are on with us today. Um, some of you may have watched our 2 p.m. Uh, live stream yesterday from Kayla to Carmel, um, but it just, the reality, you know, we began to worship in, in halfway through or less, <laughs> David Silver sees on his phone that, that right at that moment, our troops were engaged in intense combat mm -hmm. on the ground in Gaza. And, and what this means, these are our sons that are fighting. And, um, you know, it's, so we just, we just stepped up and <laughs> engaged in the battle, you know, uh, releasing the, the air force uh, of the angels, the warring angels over them and, and espousing them into, I mean, we're talking about house to house. This is really dangerous stuff that our men are involved in. I mean, the women are, are mm -hmm. I don't know if the women are, some of the women are in tanks, yeah. Um, but it is just, the reality is we are, we're in the war with them and every one of you is as well and so i i'm just so grateful also that we have these daily briefings because uh we're we're all you know meeting daily as the war is going on and, and i'm just so blessed so um i want to uh, just begin today with with a song that um was released uh, to a member of our team uh many years ago but it was like a prophetic song for israel and and for uh, as, as a battle song and we've been uh, pulling out our battle songs we have an arsenal of them and and uh, we use this one today and I just felt to present it um, and you could I, I ask Shirley to put the words in the chat for this song uh, hallelujah awake you who sleep and turn your face to the dawn your Messiah has come Arise from the dead, lift up your eyes to the light. Your Messiah has come. For behold, deep darkness will be over the earth, but the Lord shall arise. His light will be seen in you, his life will be found in you. Messiah has come. Hallelujah. Come up to the mountain the voice of the Lord, your Messiah will come. 
The sound of the trumpet shouts again in the land Our Messiah will come And the light of all nations will destroy every veil Yes, the Lord shall arise Salvation belongs to Him Nations rejoice in Him Destroy every veil, yes, the Lord shall arise. Salvation belongs to Him, nations rejoice in Him. Messiah will come, Messiah will come, Messiah will come, Messiah. Lord, the light of Messiah penetrate 
and saturate our land, oh God. Pour out your light in the midst of this darkness, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, that you can penetrate the fog and the deep darkness that's over our land today. In Yeshua's name, amen. Hallelujah, Josie, I'm going to hand to you. Amen. Thank you, Karen. It's beautiful, and it's always. Uh, so to open today, I'm going to ask David to share just for a few minutes about Hanukkah. I think we probably all by now know basically what happened, but I'm just going to get him to do a short review of that. So it's just kind of springboard launches us into um, the time together today to pray. I have, I'll share just for a few minutes as well, and then we'll try and leave as much time to, to pray because yeah, the battle is fierce. Uh, in Gaza, and we need as many of the arrows of the Lord's deliverance going out as possible. This is our, our weaponry, as we know, the word of the Lord and prayer, um, allowing our incense to arise. So, David, do you want to share for a few minutes yep, briefly sure. on Hanukkah? <laughs> okay, well, shalom, everyone. And uh, uh, you might have noticed I changed my usual blue sky, sunny background picture uh, today because that's really what it looks like outside. We've had uh, at least two uh, quite hard downpours of rain this morning, uh, which is good, of course, for the trees and the plants, but not so good for the soldiers who are out there uh, in the wet. Now, Jordan said, our son Jordan said it does keep the dust down, which is good because it's a very dusty uh, uh, war zone down there, but uh, too much rain really is going to make it very, very uncomfortable. Anyhow, uh, the Lord is in charge of the weather. So just a very quick um, connection really between what I wanted to do is really connect Hanukkah to what's happening, you know, currently in Israel. And, you know, Hanukkah really is a, uh, a it starts in just over 48 hours on Thursday evening. And uh, Hanukkah uh, means uh, rededication. And of course, it's remembering when the uh, temple was rededicated after the Greeks had uh, overrun Israel for, I think it was 150, maybe 200 years, um, back around about 165, 167 uh, B BC, before the Lord, um, these things happened. And uh, the, the Greeks, like all of our oppressors, and like even Hamas today, were very cruel, and uh, they tried to suppress uh, the Jewish people from practicing their faith and obeying the commandments of God to the point of uh, banning circumcision for the young boys and the uh, around about 167 a Syrian Greek general called Antiochus Epiphanes was uh, running the running the uh, campaign in the you know in the Holy Land and in, in Israel and uh, I don't know if he did it himself but he organized for a pig to be uh, sacrificed on the altar in the temple and I mean that is the ultimate blasphemy and uh, that caused uh, I mean you know up until that time most of the, a lot of the Jewish people most of them really had bowed down in submission to the Greeks but that caused um, a band of zealots led by uh, Judas Maccabee and his uh, brothers and a small band of you know these other zealots and the the, the Maccabees father was actually a, a Cohen he was a temple priest but anyway they led a revolt and uh, really the story goes all, you know, the pattern of the story goes right back, if, unless there was something even further back. But the first I remember is when little David defeats the giant Goliath. So that's kind of, that's where I think it started. And you could say the last example of that was uh, in 1967, when a small, you know, the small Israeli military defeated three large military uh, you know, three large nations and the and the military in, in six days, <laughs> which was just absolutely miraculous. Anyway, the the, the pattern followed uh, during this uh, revolt, and uh, I don't know the nuts and bolts of it, but ultimately, uh, the small band of Jewish zealots they defeated the uh, much larger uh, Greek army and drove them out of the country. And obviously, the first thing the religious Jews wanted to do was get the temple operating again and so they cleaned it up they uh, purified it and uh, God gave a commandment to Moses that there had to be an eternal uh, flame burning over the altar and so uh, they lit that flame but the time 
they and it's not supposed to go out once it's lit so they lit it in the, so that they could begin to worship the lord in the temple but they only had they only found one jar of the very very special uh oil now this uh, this is, you know, the, the defeat of the Greeks is a fact, but there's, there's nowhere really, I think the first record of this is in the Talmud, so it's not, you know, it's not total, it's not verifiable, but it's been, you know, it's been our tradition uh, for hundreds of years, maybe, right, you know, for probably 15, 1600 years. Anyhow, uh, the tradition says that the one day supply of oil uh, lasted for the full eight days that it took to uh, to make a new batch of this very, very uh, special oil. So that's why uh, we light this Hanukkah, which is like a menorah, except it has uh, it has eight branches plus uh, a center branch, which is called the shamash, uh, which means a servant. And we use the shamash to light each night. We light one on the first night, two on the second night, but we use that uh, we use that uh, shamash to light the other candles. And really, uh, that's a picture of Yeshua in many ways, because he is, you know, Yeshua is uh, light and he is the, you know, he is the servant who came to uh, bring us salvation. Anyway, basically, so Hanukkah is the celebration of the miracle defeat, which is, as I said, factual. And this possible, and, you know, really, if you think about uh, the miracle of the loaves and fishes, which is recorded, of course, in the New Testament, um, you know, it was no big deal for God to have, uh, you know, just uh, uh, made that eight days oil, multiplied it, sorry, one day's oil, multiplied it to last the full eight days. So I, I choose to believe it, I, you know. Um, anyhow, the relevance today, of course, is that uh, Israel, we, we need two miracles, at least. <laughs> uh, we need a miracle defeat uh, over Hamas and over our enemies right now. And, uh, you know, we, as, as Karen said earlier, the, the battle, even I think while we're uh, in the meeting today, that battle in and around Khan Yunus is still raging. And our soldiers are in great danger. Um, you know, sadly, we lost seven yesterday. So far, I'm reading we've lost one today, but we really need to, you know, when we come to that time of prayer, we really need to pray for protection. But let's pray that, uh, you know, what a perfect time for God to do this at Hanukkah is to give us some kind of supernatural, miraculous, uh, miracle defeat over, uh, over, particularly over Hamas at this time and also over uh, Hezbollah up on the northern border, and also all of the other terror groups that are operating in uh, the West Bank or Judea and Samaria. And the other miracle we need is we need our hostages back. You know, so yeah. far we've had, uh, I think, 81 of our people plus 24 foreign workers uh, returned, and some of them are, are not in really good shape because, you know, as the days go by, more and more reports are coming out about how terribly uh, abused and how badly treated they were and you know some of them are not in good shape physically and some are not in good shape emotionally either, either which is totally understandable uh, so they were in there for you know 50 51 days but now we're up to I think 61 and you know as each day goes by these uh, possibly there's 138 I think they raised the number to yesterday there's 138 uh, hostages still in there. Nobody knows how many are dead and how many are alive, but the ones who are alive, and we pray there's, there's, there's many, uh, you know, each, as each day goes by, you know, I, I would say their physical and their, you know, psychological uh, condition worsens. So we really need, again, we need, a, we need a miracle to somehow get these people out because I don't think at this point in time, um, negotiations or diplomacy is going to do it we really need a miracle so what better time uh again to ask and expect and pray for a miracle than uh at hanukkah uh so really that's uh, i think that's really what i wanted to share just to say that i guess you know this hanukkah uh which is supposed to be of course a time of great joy it's uh, great for the children we eat these terribly oily donuts to celebrate that miracle of the oil if it really happened but it's a it's a it's a time of uh, you know family celebrating but you know there's uh uh, more than 1,200 families who have lost uh, family members. There's the families of the soldiers who have sadly been killed. Uh, just um, just alone, I think close to 80 now, just inside the Gaza area, plus the ones that were uh, killed on October the 7th and several up north. Uh, and of course, there's the families of the people that are still uh, to be released. So it's going to be, for many, many families, it's going to be a very, very 
uh, I think for the whole country, really, it's going to be a very, very different uh, Hanukkah. And uh, we, we really need the spirit of the Lord to uh, to be poured out upon us like the rain today. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, amen. So I'll, pa I'll pass, the, pass back to you then, Josie. Yeah, amen. I thought the same thing, actually, when I looked out the window and saw the rain. It's like, Abba, you promised you would come to us just like the rain. Here we have the natural rain. So send us the rain of the spirit that we can truly be revived. And I just wanted to start off today with just uh, a few uh, minutes to refresh our faith because this is big what we're believing for. And it, it kind of can look impossible sometimes. So I just wanted to start off with a few words of faith building and then we can launch into some prayer. I, I, I feel, Karen, you'll probably agree with this, that we could focus on soldiers and the hostages. Again, I think primarily that's what we did yesterday because those are the big main focus of um, our prayer needs at the moment and what we need to see for a victory. Anyway, you know, I'm, I was thinking about our history and you know, Israel's wars, every one of them, always it seems, uh, had been against all odds. Uh, like what about Gideon and the Midianites who thought about King David and the Philistines, which of course is the modern day gardens or the Hamas. The Six Day War, where a number of nations were all coming against us. And then of course all the other wars, the Exodus and the Maccabean one, the Hanukkah War, which is what we're remembering right now at this point in time. They all had the same final miraculous result, a victory against all odds. When you think about it, it it's amazing. I, I find it really builds my faith and help, helps me to continue on uh, to have more faith and to believe for victory for this war that we're in. And I just believe that Israel has a very, we have a lot of things as a nation, but we have a very rich wealthy war history and I believe that from looking at that sometimes you've got to look back to see what's been done to build faith to to press on for what's ahead and I believe when we look back and see what God has done we can be confident that we will have another victory because we have a supreme God we have a God of all power and goodness and he wants, he wants his name to be made known, doesn't he, throughout the earth. And he does that through giving us the victory against all odds. And uh, I, I just believe his name is, is sealed into the very heartbeat of this nation. And uh, he wants his name to be known above all the other gods. He wants his fame, I believe, to go out of Zion when these victories happen. And when this victory happens, he wants himself to be made known uh, out of Zion, where salvation comes from, where healing comes from, and where true revival is going to come from. And I'm not sure if many of you know this, you probably don't because you're not living here on a daily basis, but our national slogan here through the whole land is a saying, Yachad Nenat Sayak, which means together we will have a victory. But I had a problem with that when it first started coming out, not long after the war started, because that says, yes, we're going to have a victory. And I believe that. But it was saying Israel, basically, we Israel. There's no mention of God there. And that uh, <laughs> that disappointed me. So when I say it, I add on, I add on Im Adonai Tzeva'ot, with the, the Lord of hosts or the God of, you know, the hosts of um, the armies of Israel. Together we will win. Yes, we will win. And it's displayed everywhere. And um, on the television, of course, in uh, advertisements and schools, buildings, construction sites, supermarkets, billboards, everywhere you look, here's this massive sign. It's amazing. It's making a statement. I believe not just before our eyes, but in the spiritual realm. Like when we have our flags uh, waving from our balconies, which of course we have our flags out as well at this point in time. We've got our flags out, we've got these slogans. Uh, but on uh, Yom ha, um, Hatzma'ut, on Israel's birthday, we put our flags out. And I've always believed that as they flap around in the wind, they make a massively powerful statement in the spiritual realm that 
here we are, raised up from the ashes of the Holocaust, a nation again, strong and thriving and successful and victorious. Uh, so it kind of become like, in a way, a holy mantra. But words are powerful. In the scriptures, it says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And I believe that all of us, as we're, we're all saying it, whether we're secular, ultra-Orthodox, religious, messianic, or whatever we are, we're all saying these words. And I believe this is very powerful. I believe this is adding to our weaponry for warfare because we know as we declare the word, these, this is our weapons to win this war. But as a nation, we're actually together in this war, even spiritually, I believe, as we say those words. So it's a real declaration of faith. And I've seen Israelis like I've never seen before. I'm seeing a portion or a new measure of faith rising up in them. Strong, yes, we will win this war and really believing it. Uh, and that's been really a pleasure to see. Uh, and so I do believe that we will have another war and that will be chronicled in our history books. And this is what we're fighting for. And today, again, we want to engage in this battle again in the heavenlies as a body here to see this victory be manifest on earth now today in this even this very hour as our boys are in there in the heart beat in the heart of gaza fighting their way through meandering through uh little tiny streets and in, um, broken down uh shelled out homes like karen mentioned at the beginning uh hiding under this and hiding under that and you know implementing their strategies and their plans that their officer has given them everybody is engaged and they've all got their own positions and tactics to, of course it's corporate but each individual unit still has their own position to stand in they've been told what to do and so as they come to do this this is how they are able to move forward and gain the ground so I don't know if David, you shared anything about exactly what was happening in Gaza. I don't know if you got an update this morning or from our boys or from the news. And then we can go into some some intercession with scripture to use as our weapons, uh, arrows. Did you want to give an update of maybe exactly what's happening? Have you heard? Okay, well, basically, we're operating in, J in Jabalia, in the north of Gaza, and um, we've really moved our focus to uh, Khan Yunus, which is in the south, and uh, Khan Yunus really is a str uh, Hamas stronghold, and they seem to think that uh, Sinwa, the guy they're really, the leader who they're really looking for, is somewhere in there, uh, in, in a bunker under, um, underneath uh, Khan Yunus. But it's quite a large, you know, it's quite a large town. I'm not sure you, if you call it a city, but it is, it is extensive. And uh, um, the tunnels under there are, you know, just everywhere. They're actually planning to uh, uh, pump seawater into the tunnels, perhaps to, uh, to uh, flush them out. And hopefully, maybe it, might, it hopefully would flush uh, the hostages out alive as well. But uh, we really are pressing in very hard. America keeps telling us we don't have much time left before we lose... Uh, you know, the support of the US and the UK and other nations that are supporting us. So uh, we're going in very hard and very strong. But as Josie just said, the, uh, you know, the, our soldiers are very exposed. They're, they're walking through rubble. They're, they're outside. Uh, you know, these guys are hiding, you know, come, coming out of the tunnels. I actually saw a video where some terrorists, the, the video was taken by the terrorists and posted on an Arab media, but the terrorists came out of a tunnel and they were photograph. They were videoing a whole group of soldiers that were just kind of standing around in their camp, and th these soldiers weren't even aware that these these terrorists had come out and were filming them. I mean, it's a wonder they didn't shoot them, but that's that's just how uh, vulnerable uh, they are. And you know, there's there's a, I'm sure there's uh, a number of believing soldiers in there as well. So uh, they're really in the heat of it down there, and it's intense. I mean. You know, we just have to pray for them because they are facing, you know, danger 24-7. What you just shared, David, you know what I thought about? That perhaps God made them invisible to the enemy because they those terrorists probably came out armed 
or they probably had knives. They could have come up from behind and attacked. I'd like to believe that God made them invisible because God has done that. He did that with our son, Stefan, in the 2006 Lebanon war. It's the only reason we still have him here with us here today. It's a miracle we have both our boys still with us here today from previous wars that they've been in where they were fighting right in the heart and the uh, in the battle, in the center of the battle. Mm. Uh, God can do this. And maybe we can make this a prayer today. He can do it. He's done it. He can do it again. He's the same God as those other wars today. Yeah. Well, obviously they weren't they weren't invisible to the video camera because we we can see them. But that we do need to pray that uh, yeah. you know we need to pray that they literally have, our guys will have eyes in the back of their heads because they have to be you know they really need to wake wake up. We got caught out. You know we got caught out on October the seventh. You know because we weren't you know we weren't on guard. And you know every time we go up to the uh, you know, up to Kailata Carmel, we pass a, uh, there's a battery of uh, anti-missile battery up there with, you know, it's all fenced off now. It's not usually there, but it's been put there be put before the war. Uh, and I, every time I drive past, I look, and but often the soldiers who are guarding the entrance are on their phones and they're not paying attention. We really need to learn that we can't, you know, our soldiers need to learn. We can't, you know, we can't drop our guard for a, for a second. We And we have to be, you know, looking all around because these guys can come from anywhere. Man. Anyway, we should pray, Josie, because it's uh, yeah. getting on. Okay, well, I can launch with prayer and then uh, maybe Renee, you could come in. You're right there um, in the center of things when you take supplies and necessities to the soldiers uh, or maybe have one of the men come in. Anyway, I'll just uh, launch an intercession. So, Avinu, our Father, Malkainu, our King, Goalainu, our, our hero, our deliverer, Hallelujah, our mighty warrior, Adonai Sevaat, we come before you again today and we come as a body with one voice, one heart, one mind, one faith, and we come and offer it up before you to stand in the gap between you and between our soldiers, our IDF, as they're in the heat of this battle. Uh, Father, that you would empower them, you would endue them with power from on high, supernatural power from on high, physically, mentally, psychologically, emotionally. Lord, to enable them to engage, to move, to, to look and to see, to hear, to have heightened senses and to and to know when to move swiftly quickly hallelujah I, I want to pray I thought about this the other day I want to pray this that you will give them the scent of a dog that this this supernatural senses of a of a smell a leading a guiding like that of the scent of a dog going to retrieve uh, or find something, discover something, uh, would be uh, placed upon them. And my prayer is that this would lead them to discovering the hostages. I know this is a big request, Abba, but I know that you can do it. You need a body. You need a physical body, a channel on this earth that you can move through. This is what you do. You use us. And here are our boys, the precious sons of Zion, fighting against the sons of Greece or the sons of Hamas. And Lord, you said that you would defend them in this day and you would give them a victory, that you would blow your shofar over them. Hallelujah. To break open the way for them. So we ask that for this anointing of the scent of a dog to discover, to find, to enable and to destroy if necessary. Hallelujah. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Renee? Yeah, thank you. Um, I was thinking also of the story um, in the Bible with, I, I think it is with Elisha, where, where they look around and they see the, the soldiers uh, from the enemy army 
And uh, the scripture says in 1 Kings 6, he answered and said, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are Amen. with them. Mm -hmm. So Father, we, we lift up our soldiers right now. Father, we ask Lord that they uh, would look up. Father, that they would realize, Father, that there's a heavenly host that is with them. Father, that they would have the sharp um, ability, Father, to uh, pin those pin those bullets and pin those warfare weapons uh, in the right spot. Father, that that ability to to sharp uh, to shoot sharp and straight, Father, as an arrow would go forth and hit the, the mark of the enemy. Father, we pray for the, the bullets and the things to go forth, Father, and, and shoot, Father, towards the enemy's camp. Father, we say we're going to go into the enemy's camp. We're going to take back what he stole from us. We're going to take back what he stole and, and those that are in captivity. Father, I ask, Lord, that we would be able, our soldiers would be able, Father, like Josie prayed, Father, that they would, they would have a realization that there's something over here or there's something over there and, and it would be our hostages. Father, that they would have clear vision, Father, in what they're doing. Father, we pray for physical, mental, emotional energy for them right now. Father, at this time, Lord, that there would be, boom, a boost, Father, of the, of the holy energy that you would give them. Father, that they would say, wow, like no coffee does this, man. And Father, they would go forth and they would pound they would strike at the enemy's camp until that, until that camp is down. Father, mm -hmm. guard over our soldiers right now, Father. Lord, put them as the head, not as the tail. Watch over and protect. Each life is precious in your hands, Lord. You've written them on the palm of your hand. And we thank you for that, Father. Guard over and keep our soldiers right now, we pray. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Amen, Renee, amen. Okay, uh, now I saw somebody, Michael, Michael, would you be able to offer up a prayer? Send an arrow out, nice sharp one. Yofi, amen. Thank you. Thank you, almighty God, God of Israel, our Father. We just call upon the name of Jesus, the name above all names. God, we agree together that you would work mightily on behalf of the armies of Israel. Father, we thank you for your great works in the past and thank you that you are the God of today, the God of eternity. So we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would strengthen the soldiers. God, you'd strengthen the hostages. God, you would visit them, Lord God, and come upon them with the, the power as it came upon Samson when the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Oh God, to do your work, Lord, and to believe you for miracles, Lord God. And we agree in the name of Yeshua, amen. Afifa. Yes, Father God, I agree with every prayer is being lifted as the sharp arrow straight, Father God, from your throne, Father God, to the enemy's camp. And Lord, I thank you and I'm called upon the God of glory, the mighty in battle. It says to you that the Lord Almighty in battle, battle, Lord God. So I pray for the for this for the soldier lord jesus there you hide them completely you blind the enemy from seeing them i pray lord jesus i pray for the soldier father god that you go go ahead of them you go ahead of them and make a way father god i pray in the name of jesus father god they will be vigilant they will be vigilant they will be radical the two step ahead of their enemy father god that go into the camp and snatch like my sister said 
what has been stolen. And I pray for a God as this David restore all that they, we are restoring every soul captive in that Lord God. Every one of them we pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the time of Hanukkah because of the children, Father God, or because of the suffering, they will be eaten from the Holy Spirit. You will come with the oil of the Holy Spirit, the palm of Gilead over them to restore them, to heal them, to wipe mm -hmm. the memory, the bad memory away from them, Father God. We bring in you everyone in this. And I pray, Father God, that somehow that you surround them. I just I just seen hand coming like that, oh God, coming down like that and protect them while you make a way. So make a way, Lord Jesus, I pray in the name of Yeshua. And I thank you, Father God. This is the year of open doors. So I pray, open up, open up the door so we can restore all back in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Asifa. Um, Tim, Timothy, Timothy, would you be able to also release yep. a prayer? Yes, Father, we, we come and we thank you that glorious and majestic are your deeds, that your righteousness endures, that you have caused your wonders to be remembered and you are gracious and compassionate that you provide food for those who fear you. You remember your covenant forever. You have shown your people the power of your works, giving them the lands of other nations. And we thank you for this promise, Lord, that even in darkness, light will dawn for the upright, for the gracious, compassionate and righteous man. And we continue to cry out, Father, that your light would be dawning as we've, we've prayed for eyes in the back of their heads, for supernatural senses, abilities to smell like dogs, to know where to go. We thank you that your light is dawning for those soldiers right now in Gaza to find the way to the captives, to the ones that are held hostage. And we declare release. We declare the light of the living God is shining and is bringing deliverance and release in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Father, I agree with these uh, powerful prayers. Lord, I, I want to ask in particular um, for believing leaders, believing soldiers who are in some of the hardest and most difficult situations. Lord, would you place your hand upon them, Lord? I pray that if we could see in the spiritual realm, we would see angelic assistance surrounding them. Lord, I agree with these prayers for Holy Spirit, supernatural senses, all alive and working together to be able to discern the works of the enemy and also to be able to discern what you are saying, Lord, whether to turn to the left, to the right, to stand still, to press on, Lord. We pray for that protection. Lord, I ask also for the other soldiers who are unbelieving soldiers to see the light of Messiah in these believing soldiers, including some of them who are leading Amen. units. Lord, I pray that they would see you, that they would know that this isn't, uh, not only is it not an ordinary um, uh, things, circumstances happening because of the severity and the seriousness and the danger, but they would also know that this is not an ordinary event because something supernatural is happening. The stories that they've heard of your mighty and powerful deliverance of your people is happening again. Lord, we call out to you for your deliverance of your people. And I ask that you would use your people, that you would use the Jewish soldiers, even the Messianic Jewish soldiers, use your people to free your people. Lord, what seems impossible to us, how can they find uh, the hostages? How can the hostages be released at this point or just saved right out of where they're being held captive? Nothing is too hard for you. That's so Lord, we ask in the name of Yeshua that you would do mighty miracles, that we would praise and glorify your name because you alone are worthy of that attention and worship and praise. We bless you, Lord.
Okay, anybody else? Oh, here we go, Shoshana. Oh, I'm sorry, but Blair was had his hand up first. Let's go with that. Oh, sorry, okay, then who was it? Blair. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Blair. Thank you, that's all right. See you. Uh, um, Zechariah 9, on my heart, uh, praying for the, the, the in, in praying for the hostages it's, it's, as they are going forth and uh, um, in uh, verse 11, as you as for you also because of the blood of my covenant with you, I have set your prisoners prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold of prisoners who have hope. This very day I'm declaring that I will restore you, restore double to you. And Father, that, that testifies to the hope that, that, that Job had out of such great despair. And as, as there, there, there may be, but there are prisoners of hope that, that know you, Lord. And we, we pray for all the prisoners, Lord, but, but especially those that know you. And, 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 and remember uh, thinking of the hostage from the, uh, who had been through the, um, through the Holocaust. And how the testimony was that when she was taken, she had a smile, as as, as testified um, uh, um, previously on, uh, and and when asked why she smiled after being returned, she had seen that look before in the Nazis. They were not going to break her, Lord. That you are working, okay, and this is different, and that you are remembering your promises to Israel. And, and 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 though there is affliction and, and 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 so and there's been repentance and we pray for repentance, Lord, and especially now that that um, as the army goes forth, that they would not be like Gideon's ten thousand, but by like the like the three hundred, Lord, to see that this is you and it is not um, together without God. It's together because of God. And and that those messianic believers, Lord, would would testify that you are doing this. And it's marvelous in our eyes that you are the stronghold and that you are going forth, Lord. And we pray for um, that you would strengthen them, be bold and courageous as, as, as Joshua going forth to battle, Lord. And, 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 and as, the, as the 300, as they were so tired, and yet you strengthened them still. And they went forward. And they were victorious because of the power of God in them. And we lift this up at this time, Lord, and pray that for the, um, the, the, the Rahabs that, that have come forth, probably we don't know about lord that 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 they would go forth and that the information would be good and that they would find the hostages and bring them back to the praise of your glory and and the testimony lord of those in gaza that have are, are victims of this, this the, these evil rulers lord we, we we pray we pray for them and for their well-being too in jesus holy name amen amen that was Excellent and powerful, Blair. Thank you so much. And that scripture is a very powerful scripture with so many promises all through it from, I think, from about verses nine right through to the end there. So I'm so happy you uh, brought that in and was um, praying for hostages. Uh, yeah. Is there anybody else that would um, want to pray? Shoshana. Yeah, I see you now. Mm -hmm. And Josie, after that, uh, I want to call on Hannah because she had two visions she wants to share with us. Please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll try to make it short. <laughs> so I have Psalm 7 and um, 7 and until 8, uh, 2. But I don't read all verses because of time. So uh, 10, my 7, 10. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is righteous, judge, and a God who is indignation every day. That is, I don't know, yes. um, if man does not repent, he will sharpen his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. He is also prepared for himself deadly weapons. Um, he makes his errors fear charts. Behold, he trades with wickedness, and he conceives mischief and brings forth falsehood. He has dug a pit and hallowed it out, and has fallen into the hole which he made. His mischief will return upon his own head, and his violence will descend upon his own pet. I will give thanks to the Lord according to his righteousness, and 
will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. How majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens, from the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. Lord, and we declare this over the situation. I thank you, Lord, that you, if they, they made it pit and have evil plans, they fall in it by your word and themselves. And I thank you, Lord, that you have um, given a might to the infant and nursing babes. You have established a strength. And I thank you that you are rising up all the hostages, even the little babies, which are still missing. And that out of their mouth, this might is rising. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shoshana. Hannah, do you want to open your mic and share what your Lord showed you on the call? I can, Karen, but if there's others who want to pray, I can easily post it too. I mean, I know a lot of people do like to pray together, so I can post it in the signal too. I, I think we have, it's okay. I mean, if we, I think you can take a few minutes because it might be something we can also pray into. Mm -hmm. Would you okay, like to? the first vision came when Josie was talking about the arrows, and what I saw was when you take your Hanukkah, Hanukkah this year, when you light the candle, recognize that that light can be shot at the end of your arrow. So I saw arrows being shot into Gaza, arrows being shot up to the northern border, and then arrows were coming from all over the globe into Israel. So let the light really increase this year. The second vision came uh, a bit later, but it was the Lord holding up it, the uh, the Hanukkah has the extra two uh, branches at the end, and it was his two arms with the menorah in the middle. And he was reminding me again, he's holding up the sevenfold spirit. This is, and to draw on the whole full menorah, let the full light, every lamp be blazing this season. Ferocious mm -hmm. focus for the, um, for the soldiers and plunder the plunderer is what he said to me plunder the plunderer mantle mantle the hostages and the soldiers was supernatural now it's time it's really time amen amen you know hannah i wanted to say i've been i've been waiting to i wanted to read the scriptures from psalm 18 uh throughout the call but you ju you just spoke about the arrows and seeing arrows everywhere so i just wanted to, uh, many we've been quoting psalm 18 many many times since the war began but uh it just highlighted again uh, starting in verse 13 uh, the Lord thundered from heaven. You know, last night we had the beginnings of this thunderstorm <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, it was these loud thunderings and I actually didn't know if it was uh, planes or bombs or <laughs> my cat was quite disturbed and we couldn't figure out what it was and I realized it was the thunder, but, but it also the Lord has his spiritual thunder from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, he, and he vanquished them. Then the, chan then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. And, and you know, as his arrows go forth, as lightnings also, he can expose uh, what's under the ground and in it and Lord so we just thank you oh God that your arrows are mighty in the in the heart of the king's enemies oh God we we thank you Lord God that you are shooting forth spiritual arrows oh God uh, arming our soldiers but but from heaven oh God you are thundering and you will expose the channels of the sea oh God the places of darkness and you will vanquish our foes we just thank you for that oh God in Yeshua his name amen amen yeah arrows of the lord's deliverance and arrows of the lord's victory amen and i think this is where we can sharpen our uh arrows isn't it <laughs> as we're each um doing what we're doing we're iron sharpening iron um i think we've got about five minutes to go and i think i just want to say something just a few minutes to say something and then maybe we'd have a maybe a couple more prayers, short prayers, and then we can wind it up because I know that uh, you like to wind it up right on the hour. So at the end of uh, the Global Watch 
brief that David and I did with Fred and Sue on Monday, uh, at the end of it, Sue wrapped it up. She did a, a most amazing wrap of the whole half hour brief. It, it was just perfect. And then after that, she issued, uh, she ushered out a challenge to everybody to pray for uh, the hostages uh, every day during um, this Feast of Lights or Hanukkah. And I want to uh, make an extension of that uh, challenge on this platform today to each and every one of you that you would you would do that if you weren't on that brief and uh, then would you take up the challenge ask yourself would you take up the challenge to pray it just has to be for a few minutes because God can answer a prayer of two a two word prayer God is God but you know so one or two minutes even every day but I want to add to that challenge that you would also add a one or two minute prayer every day for the hostages. And then I want to make another little extension onto that. It's, it's, it's called multiplication ministry. Then you would ask somebody else in your local prayer group or your church or your family members, your friends that are believers that are praying for Israel, would they do the same thing? And then we've got a lot more arrows going out. We've got a whole bunch of them. Just They're just going to be adding to the arrows that are already going out. And every prayer, I believe, makes a difference. As I said, if it's a one or two minute prayer or if it's a two word prayer, God hears it and he can answer it. So may, maybe I'm not sure, surely, if there's time, it's a few minutes to go. Would there be time for one more prayer? Bill, do you have anything that you could finish us off with, with a, another arrow? Yes, I do. Zechariah 12, 8, and 9. In that day, Adonai will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the weakest, or in some translations, the feeblest among them that day will be like David, and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of Adonai before them. It will happen in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So, Father, we don't know when that day is, but we behold, this is the day of Yeshua, the day of salvation. As we are alive, we live and move and have our being with your purposes, Lord, with your intent, with all our hearts, that we might indeed see your glory manifested, Lord, your presence, your kavod in the earth, in this scenario, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Surely I'd like to finish with one verse because we've declared the word of the Lord today and he says in Numbers 23 and verse 9, God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said, has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? He has blessed. And who can curse what God has blessed? But God says he will do what he has said he said he would do. And this is what he's going to do, his word. So we can believe that he's going to answer today, now, in this hour, the word of God that's gone forth like blazing, sharp, hot, like iron on the end, arrows just to sink right in. Wow. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. Amen. Amen. You know, it's the second time that you are on the Global Watch this week with David. And what Blair was reading was about um, double, right? He was reading from, um, uh, where, where is it? Yeah. Right Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope even today i declare that i will restore double to you and so you know i know there's all these little things but they all meaningful and so we just received that thank you josie for the way you ended this you just you, it's like you put it in a perfect gift wrap and tied the bow thank you that's what i said about sue on monday and she wrapped it up and still with a kiss um so <laughs> still with a kiss <laughs> 
Well, no longer are you guys all watchmen. You're